Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Behind me rise the stunning Patagonian peaks of Fitzroy and Saratori, famous amongst climbers and photographers for their steep walls and inclement weather. Join me as I traverse rivers, climb glaciers, and cross an ice cap to get a different view of these often photographed peaks. I'm Art Wolf. This is Travels to the Edge. A couple of years ago, I was flying from Punta Arenas up to Santiago, and I looked out the plane window, and I saw these great spires. Big glacier on the west side, and I thought, that would be a fantastic place to go and shoot. Patagonia encompasses the great tale of South America. Straddling both Chile and Argentina, it stretches across the Patagonian ice caps over the granite masses of Fitzroy and Torres del Paine to Tierra del Fuego, the southern extreme of the Americas. This region is defined by the incessant winds, vast lakes, incredible wildlife, and tall granite spires. Mount Fitzroy and Saratori are world-class mountains that have been photographed largely from the same viewpoint. The reason I've come to Patagonia is really to get three distinct views of these very famous mountains. I love the idea of coming around these great iconic mountains and photographing them with a different view. Hiking through the trees, these twisted trees, is a great counter to what lies beyond. In this forest, you've got lichens and mosses and tiny flowers. This is a beautiful forest. I like the way the light comes down through these trees. Joining me on this journey is lifelong friend Rick Holt and local guide Walter Rosini. So many people see it from this side. So this is our challenge, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. To gain these views from the north, possibly from the west if we're really lucky. If the weather permits, it's a wonderful so, trek. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's an expedition. It's not just a trek. As we hike up this valley, we're starting to lose the vegetation and suddenly you're in a really open landscape of short heather and meadows. You see the moraine and the residue of ancient glaciers. It's really this big U-shaped valley of rock and open skies. You're so embedded in this valley, you still don't have the views of the mountains you've come to see. This is a great place, guys, to see what a moraine looks like. This is a frontal moraine where we are right now. It's a deposit of material down by the glacier. I'll show you with an example here with my boot. Imagine that my boot is the ice coming downhill. It advances, and because of an increasing of uh, global temperature, the ice betrays, but it leaves a deposit of material. That those are the moraines, the frontal moraines, we've got in this case, lateral moraines of the size. Yeah, this is the beginning of a lot of loose rock. This journey is really challenging because you're spending most of the time just bouldering. 
walking over scree slopes of really loose rock. Looks like we got our crossing. Looks pretty cool to me. It's like cross first with our yeah. backpack. So I change boots, then I turn back and help you to crossing, okay? Yeah. I hate walking around with wet boots, so I've absconded a pair of hoarder boots, and unfortunately, they look like a seven, and I'm a nine and a half, but you know what? We're gonna try to make it work. I feel like Cinderella, as I say. One of the things that I notice the most about Patagonia is the air is so clear. The skies are dramatic. There's really a deep, deep, clear blue punctuated with these beautiful swirling clouds. Hey Art, do you think the weather's gonna hold? Well, this being Patagonia, I don't know. Wow, look at the North Face. That's amazing. Right after we establish camp tonight, I want to come back and shoot that mountain before it disappears. But weather, can't predict it here. We just hope it holds up. Yeah. When you're on the track, you're always watching the weather because when it's clear, you're always nervous because it's going to change. And when it's cloudy, you're always hoping that it's going to clear. It never stays the same. You know, Rick, this is one of the views that I really wanted to get on this trip. This is the very impressive north face of Mount Fitzroy, and the weather is perfect for this. This is the one shot I wanted to get on the north side, and look how beautiful Fitzroy is glowing out there. because you're really at the mercy of the elements. Probably seven out of 10 treks fail. Well guys, the Marconi Glacier. It's time to harness up, get on the crampons and hit the ice. This looks like it's gonna be windy up there. There's a lot of shots to get on top of the glacier, but even more seductive is to get in and under the glacier. There's 200 feet of ice pressing down on this rock. I'm looking for abstracts of color and texture. I 
I love to challenge perceptions, and this is a great environment for doing that. Wow, it's amazing. If you look up into this ice, you can see all the pockets of air trapped in there. There's a beautiful contrast between the pink of the outside light and the blue of this interior space. Ah, oh, this is nice. As I look through this ice, I can see a lot of the outside light that's reflecting down into these recesses, and it's really fantastic. Oh, I love this. Everywhere I move the camera becomes a new abstract. As I document this expedition, I'm going to try to balance the grand landscapes with intimate landscapes and unusual things that I've not photographed before, and this is one of them. I've photographed countless streams flowing out of mountains, but I've never photographed a stream flowing over the top of a glacier. And what attracted me to this shot is the beautiful blue that's the backdrop to the rapids. To convey that in an artistic way, I've taken a long exposure, so it's going to have motion blur, blue coming through, and I think it will be a very, very nice addition to the collection of photos I amass on this trip. Wow, the weather is so nice right now. Hoping for the second shot I want. This seems pretty safe. These crevasses are really wide open, so you can see them coming, and that's the big danger of hiking on a glacier is not seeing the crevasses. We're absolutely going to make it Marconi Pass today. What I'm hoping is that those clouds dancing over the top of Fitzroy remain in place towards the late, late afternoon light. I think that could be spectacular. We've seen three or four good avalanches come off this wall. They say that the a snowflake that falls from the sky and hits these glaciers takes 300 years before it's released from the glacier. I find that utterly amazing. great day on the glacier. It was one of our hardest days, and yet it wasn't that hard at all. It's not even cold, but the clouds are moving in, and that gives me a little bit of uh, pause for concern. Art said he's not too tired. I am. This is it. The end of the day. The end of the day, end of the glacier for the day.
Voila. We are on Marconi Pass, and this place is famous for the winds. And although it's really nice right now, the lenticular cloud building up over the mountains, I think, is an indicator that winds are on the way. This is my second favorite view that I was hoping to get, and it's the northeast view of Mount Fitzroy and Saratori. As you can see by the light on the mountains behind me, it's pretty flat. There's a very thin veil of clouds obscuring the sun. But as I look to the west, there's a big gap in these clouds. And I suspect in an hour or so, things could really drastically change. Regardless of the atmospheric conditions, I'm always shooting because you never know whether a tiny break in the clouds will suddenly reveal a mountain or close in, and that's the last shot of the entire trip. So I'm always shooting, expecting those shots to be the last. But invariably, it gets better and better and better. Working in Southern Patagonia, you're, you're basically in what they call the Roaring Forties the lower latitudes where winds come racing across the southern Pacific some 2,000 miles unimpeded by any land formations. And they literally slam into these jagged peaks that rise thousands of feet out of this very narrow isthmus of land. It was bound to happen that the weather would catch up with us, and now it has. The weather is pretty wicked. We've got a fairly long trek uh, to our destination. Probably about a five hour hike. Today is a very long slog on a very big glacier. Today is like the moon day. Everything changes. We're walking on, on the ice cap, so it's a huge terrain. All right, look at the horizon right now. You can't even see the difference between the snow and the sky. This is the closest environment that I can remember to Antarctic. It's just so flat and limitless. It's amazing to me to walk out here in this great expanse. It's almost impossible to judge distances. I know that we're going to be heading another three hours down to camp, but I, I look ahead and I can't even fathom how far that is in terms of the mountains. It's kind of a great feeling to be out here in such a wide open space, and the only people you see are the people you know. Our main objectives, the views of Fitzroy and Saratori, are cloaked in heavy mist. In this part of the world, if the weather clears, it's an amazing sight to see these mountains come out of all the mist. And if it doesn't happen, OK. This is not the end of the world. Unlike art, I don't get to do this too often. I'd be pretty disappointed if we don't get a good view. Based on what I see and my experience in the mountains, I don't think we're going to see the mountains for at least a day. And we're appropriating enough time to give it at least three days. And after three days, if it doesn't clear, we're moving on. It's amazing how the weather of Patagonia always is taunting and teasing you. They give you little glimpses of these great mountains through these clouds. And sometimes those views open up to a grand vista. More times than not, they close back in. We finally have arrived at a spot that we think is perfect for Saratoria and Fitzroy. Based on what I see on the horizon, I think we're going to need all the three days that we've allotted here. This is a very exposed place, so we're gonna create a wall out of blocks of ice.
you arrive at a place where you think the mountains will be stunning if the weather clears. You build your wall of ice, you erect your tents, and you hope the following day the weather will, in fact, clear. Absolutely ecstatic. This is a view that I've been waiting years to see and years to photograph. It's unbelievable how miserable the weather was yesterday and how clear and perfect it is today. Just to see Fitzroy and Saratori rising right out of this vast glacier, it is perfect. What I'm concentrating on is just doing the rock in the ice, the ice on top of Saratori. And with a polarizer, I'm darkening the blue sky, so there's a beautiful contrast. Clouds really lend an element that makes these mountains that much more intriguing to my eye. The west view of Mount Fitzroy and Saratori is everything that I had hoped it would be. These mountains just rise out of this ice cap unabated in these vertical walls of granite. I can't think of any landscapes on Earth that match the dramatic vertical rise of these great mountains. It takes a lot of work to get here. It absolutely takes a lot of work. And then you have to have luck, perseverance, and uh, it pays off eventually. This is fantastic with the light, the way it's playing off these rock faces, the glacier on the bottom, the blue sky behind it. It gives a nice, really dramatic effect with the light. You know what I love about this composition is just the cleanness of the granite, the blue sky, so, so perfect. I like the way the ice just rims each one of those pinnacles. I love the way these things just jut up in the sky. They're so uncompromising. So few climbers have ever stood on the top of that mountain. When you think of Everest, who's been climbed hundreds and hundreds of times, you know, this mountain has had a handful of people on the summit of it. It's extraordinary. And that's just indicative of how wild Patagonia is, how inaccessible it can be, and how harsh the weather can be at times. There's an allure, there's a, a draw, there's a magic about mountains. It's really comforting for people to realize that there's places on this planet that are untamed and raw and wild. My photographs are intended to remind people that places like Mount Fitzroy and Saratory exist. I'm Art Wolf. Join me next time on Travels to the Edge.